Without further ado, we will begin tonight's meeting with opening statements. The order has been determined by random draw. Before we hear from the municipal council candidates, it's important for you to be aware that you will also be voting in this election for our local school board trustees. There are two contested races for the Upper Canada District School Board and also the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario. The candidates have been invited to provide you with a two-minute statement and they will be available to meet you afterwards back behind me here at the tables uh, after the debate to answer any questions you may have about our education system. There are two people running for English Public Trustee. I see we have one here this evening and I will ask Larry Berry to come forward for this two minutes to do an introductory comment. Larry. Uh, moderators, uh, fellow candidates, ladies and gentlemen, very nice to see so many people. Uh, the position for which I am running is an English public school trustee on the Upper Canada District School Board. I'm running in Ward 7. This is all of Dundas, South Dundas and North Dundas. More than 14,000 voters. It has two high schools. Uh, North Grenville, or er, North Dundas, Seaway, five elementary schools, Chesterville, Iroquois, Morrisburg, Nation View, Winchester Public Schools. As I am a taxpayer in South Dundas, this allows me to run in D Dundas, even though Barbara and I reside in Prescott. I chose Dundas because I know the schools and the area well. Having been born and raised in South Mountain, having taught 22 years in Dundas, lived and raised three kids in Winchester. My platform is too large to describe in two minutes, but I have a table back there and I'll talk to you afterwards. One point I wish to emphasize, if I get to be your trustee, I will listen. How will I listen? I'll answer individual contacts. I'll get back to you if you ask me something. Attend school committee meetings, attend board meetings in person, stay in touch with local councils, attend school functions and sporting events, that won't be hard, and exchange information with local media. Keep in mind that the Upper Canada Board has 11 voting members. An individual board member must get the support of a majority of members to achieve any motion or get anything done. Therefore, I plan to be a contributing member of the board. I plan to work hard. I want every child in our seven schools to be given the best chance to succeed. If you have a question or comment, again, I'll be back there. I hope you get anything out of this little speech is that I am willing and ready. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> we will now hear from Donna Nielsen, who is running for English separate trustee through the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming this evening, and thank you the South Dundas Chambers of Commerce for hosting this event. I am Donna Nielsen, and I am a candidate for the English Separate School Trustee. Having, after having recently retired from a successful career in Catholic education, I welcome the opportunity to run as English Separate School Trustee for Dundas and Stormont. If elected, I would contribute meaningfully in the areas of faith development, curriculum, special education, First Nations, and mental health. It was inspiring working and collaborating with many professionals as a teacher and later as principal. We were committed to nurturing the hearts, minds, bodies, and souls of all of our students. Planning in the best interest of our students was paramount in the schools in which I served. As English separate school trustee, I'm committed to being a leader in Catholic education, promoting student achievement, well-being, and equity, promoting a positive school environment that is inclusive and accepting of all students, being a visible and valuable presence at St. Mary, St. Cecilia, St. Mary, Our Lady of Good Counsel, St. Andrews, and St. Joseph's in Cornwall creating collaborative relationships inside the board and across the community, and providing continuous improvement. I'm committed to my faith, my family, and to Catholic education. As English Separate School Trustee, I would reflect upon and draw upon my many experiences 
in Catholic education, in my parish, and in my own faith. I eagerly anticipate being awarded this privilege. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Just for your information before we go to opening statements, for voting for your school trustee, your voter letter will list your school support. If you are unsure or you'd like to amend it, please see Brenda Brunt or visit the municipal offices. We will now move to opening statements from our municipal candidates. Candidates for mayor will have three minutes for their opening. Deputy mayor candidates and councillor candidates will have two minutes each. They will be timed, and as you noticed here a little bit before, with 15 seconds remaining, I will politely stand as a friendly gesture for them to wrap up. At the end of their time, I'll politely move on to the next candidate. So without further ado, we'll ask Yvonne Delegard as mayoral candidate for three minutes to begin. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator, fellow candidates, ladies and gentlemen. South Ness has been home for me for most of my life. I was born in Winchester, grew up on a family farm on McIntosh Road in Dundee, and currently reside in Iroquois. I'm a former business owner and spend many active hours as a volunteer in our community. It's been an honor and a privilege to have served the municipality for the past nine years, five as your councillor and four as your mayor. As a member of the SDG counties, I'm currently chair of the library board. Four years ago, the atmosphere and negative cloud hanging over our beautiful municipality was disturbing. There was a reluctance to do business with South and Daz, and this had to change. We all needed to work together to achieve this goal and rebuild relationships. From the onset, it's been a challenge. During the first two years, significant changes occurred in administration, and the new staff began cold turkey. These transitions take time, however, the municipality is in a much better place today. I believe there is still much more to be done. Council, staff, and the community can be proud of the accomplishments that have been achieved during this term. Improved customer service and communication through the website, social media, and 360 guide, rebuilding of relationships with the feds, province, neighboring municipalities, a viable solution to the PAR process and working with the school board and proud recipients of a provincial award for the proposal that we provided to the uh, school board. New 401 entrance signs, an economic development, refocus on business, investment in our road system, including paving the village streets in the villages for the first time in many years, introducing a community improvement plan to assist existing commercial industry, the opening of several new businesses, promoting tourism and rejuvenating the Upper Canada Region brand, and also proud recipients of a national award, review and assessment of 50 properties and sale of surplus, construction of Matilda Works Garage, upgrades to the Marina, to the, sorry, the Morrisburg Arena and the Civic Centre, and a new rink building in Dundee. Four years of clean financial audits and maintaining healthy reserves, Tax increases have been in relation to the cost of living. Announcement of a $750,000 investment towards extending the sewer line and pumping station for the pro proposed multi-million dollar Dutch Meadows residential subdivision. This project will benefit local businesses and services and address the need for condos, single family dwellings and semis. Asset conditioning reports on buildings estimated that over $3 million that are needed in upgrades that's a quick three minutes. <laughs> anyway, we have also continued great relationships with the counties and have had many uh, dealings with the counties that have been to the benefit of uh, our municipality. And as well, we have many uh, upcoming uh, in the next uh, few years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to thank you for coming to this debate. It shows that you care about South Dundas and what happens here. I've been asked more than once why have I decided to run in this election. My answer is simple, change. I don't like what I've seen happening in South Dundas for the past four years. I believe it needs to change. I believe South Dundas has an amazing future ahead if we all work together to create the change we want to see in our communities. For this to work, we need to set a, real, set a realistic plan and we need to take action. We need to follow through on that plan. Change won't happen without action. 
If elected, I will commit to the following. I will take action. An open and transparent council. I will focus on ensuring residents know what's going on. Listening to learn and understand before making a decision. Improve relationships between municipal staff and the residents they serve. Effective leadership at council table. I will ensure council members, staff, residents, and visitors are treated with respect during council meetings. I will ensure every member of council has the opportunity to ask questions and speak their mind. Budgets and tax increases that make sense for South Dundas and its residents. A good working relationship with volunteers. I will make sure volunteers get the help they need to continue doing the work they do to make South Dundas a better place to live. Resolve the landfill issue. This is a big money issue and it needs to be a priority of the next council. Retuning and implementing South Dundas's asset management plan. Apply simple, common sense thinking to all decisions. To underpromise and overachieve. I won't make promises I can't keep. I will listen and I will answer honestly based on what's realistic for South Dundas. I will put in the time, energy, and effort needed to make South Dundas a great place to live, to work, and to visit. After spending the past four years in the penalty box, I am prepared to change my ways. I will listen more, and I will talk less. The past four years have allowed me to hear the concerns of the citizens of South Dundas and the issues they feel need to be addressed. I am here tonight to listen to your concerns. If elected, I promise to do my best to take South Dundas in a new direction. One where we can all be proud to call this municipality our home. With me as your mayor, this will not be my South Dundas, it will be our South Dundas. Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing what you have to say tonight. We will now move to Deputy Mayor Candidates. First up is Bill Ewing. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to thank the Chamber for putting this event on. I would also thank all of you for coming out. Before I begin, I would like to say that I'm not a public speaker, but a worker that can get things done. For those who don't know me, I own Bill's Towing and Recovery, as well as being one of your counselors. I've accumulated a vast knowledge of municipal works, having been an employee for 20 years, as well as having been on council for the past nine years. I have always been community minded. I have sat on numerous boards and committees working for the betterment of our municipality. I continue to sit on the BIA as well as the Rio St. Lawrence board. I recently retired from our fire department after 35 plus years as deputy chief. I believe I can change strides and move on municipal issues at the drop of a hat if something needs to happen in a hurry. Sitting on council can be demanding one must be able to devote their time freely, but also be dedicated and committed individual to work on our residents' behalf any time of day or night. Over the next four years, the municipality must address the operations, maintenance, and expansion of the landfill site in order to continue offering the service to the people of South Dundas. Staff and council must evaluate the replacement of the water towers, whether it be one or two towers, to serve as Iroquois and Morrisburg. A comprehensive review of our asset management plan will allow council to properly identify the municipality infrastructure needs and the proper funds are allocated to roads, bridges, and fleet. As a deputy mayor seeking economic development business and residential opportunities, meeting with our local MP and MPP and seeking provincial and federal funding is key in growing our community. I'm not going to stand here and make promises I may not be able to keep, nor am I going to criticize any other councillor's action or decisions. I, as Deputy Mayor, I will weigh all the issues and make decisions based on knowledge and experience. As Deputy Mayor, your concerns will continue to be my concerns. 2.15 and perfect. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Kirsten Kirker. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Chamber for hosting this event and all of you for coming out tonight. Hey folks, my name is Kirsten Gardner and I want to be your deputy mayor. I've been a lifetime resident of SDNG, but South Dundas is a place my husband and I chose as a community for our daughter to grow up in. And while some of you don't know who I am, 
my connection to South Dundas is not a new one. As a heritage coordinator, I worked hard to facilitate projects the community wanted, like the, one of the largest historical uh, projects the community ever has, a historical mural project. I worked on the Save the Train project. I was the founder of the original Antique Festival when thousands of people attended, and I actually brought it here to Dixon's Corner one summer. I worked hard for you then, and I will work hard for you now. I was also the first female Lion Club for the Morseburg Lions Club. And more recently, just after my daughter started kindergarten, I was tapped on the shoulder to represent Morseburg Public during the ARC process. I followed through by helping to build a strong parent council, and I demanded and got a new principal to lead the school. My volunteer experience also includes being a victim services responder throughout SDNG. I currently sit as a member of the Police Services Board for the OPP in SDNG for almost eight years, two being Vice Chair. Professionally, I've worked at all three levels of government in various leadership roles. In my career, I've driven results, provided positive outcomes, and achieved goals by hard work, asking questions, listening to stakeholders, and following through with decisions. My reasons for running for council are probably similar to many of the reasons some of you are here tonight. Things could be better, and they need to be better. Decisions about things like senior housing, landfills, heritage, growth, and lack of customer service to all of us can no longer be ignored. I promise to work for you, and I promise to work with you for a better, stronger, more community-connected municipal government. We can't keep voting the same way and expecting different results. On October 22nd, I value your support. Thank you. Next is Jim Graham. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you to the Chamber of Commerce and everybody for coming out today and listening to us. I'll give you the background of my experience. I, have eight, I had eight years on South Dynamics Council from 2006 to 2014. Eight years on the Morrisburg Business Improvement Area Committee and other municipal committees. I'm a retired OPP Staff Sergeant Detachment Commander with many years of management and administrative experience. While working in the administration division of the OPP General Headquarters, I was Division Budget Coordinator for two years tasked with reviewing the annual budget on a regular basis to identify any shortfalls or surpluses in a budget of over $100 million. After retirement, I formed my own computer technology consulting business operating successfully for over 10 years and achieved accreditation as a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer plus Internet. Prior to becoming a member of the OPP, I was employed by the City of Kingston, Public Works Department, and the Engineering Department, drafting and surveying for the streets and roads section. My priorities and concerns and reasons for running were I uh, have concerns over losing control of our local government to other le levels of government, keeping taxes at or below inflation rate by spending dollars wisely, providing a practical cost-effective solution for the replacement of the aging water towers in Morrisburg and Iroquois. Closure of our two landfill sites in the coming years. Is there a better solution than the uh, mega dumps? Ensuring we maintain healthy reserves to avoid unexpected tax increases caused by improper planning or emergencies. Anybody that has received my flyer, you'll notice that I have a, my cell phone number is on the bottom of that. And you're welcome to call me at any time if you have any questions or any concerns uh, about my uh, platform. Thank you very much for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Next is Jeff Lewis. We will now move to councillor candidates. Donald Lewis will be first. Good evening, citizens of South Dundas. I would like to start out by thanking the Chamber for hosting this event tonight. As you know, my name is Donald William Lewis. I retired from the municipality of South Dundas on July 27, 2018. Altogether, I have 29 years of employment, all with recreation, 7 years as a contract worker, 22 years as a full-time employee, and 16 of these years I was a manager slash director. 16 years of sitting at a council table discussing on budget issues. 253 GL ledgers on buildings, playground structure, grass cutting, capital projects, and overseeing most of them, and et cetera, et cetera. People ask me, what can you bring to the council table? 
and I have this to say. My reason for running for council, all citizens should be first on all council's debates. I will bring common sense. I will voice my concerns and anybody else's concerns and issues. I have experience, knowledge. Council needs to take action to move forward, not backwards. I believe that the newly elected council will have many issues to deal with, such as waste field sites, buildings, roads, water towers, and using more local contractors. Thank you very much. We will now hear from Archie Mellon. Um, first, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. It's great to see such a large crowd out. I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this All Candidates Night, and Eric for being our moderator. I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank everybody that's up here, uh, all the candidates, for putting their name forward. My name is Archie Mellon. I've lived in South Dundas all my life. I just lived back the road here a little way back in Halbert, and I farm with my brother, and we still are. My experience, I guess, would be with farm organizations. I've sat on several farm organizations over the years as uh, directors, and I'm uh, still a member of uh, several other farm organizations. Uh, I've been your counselor for the last eight years and uh, I've been very proud of that. I've sat on num numerous committees over that time, uh, cemetery board, uh, mural committee, um, uh, right now I'm also a current member of uh, South Nation Conservation uh, Board of Directors and uh, that is valuable experience going forward. Why I'm running I guess is because I still have a passion and a desire and I think there still needs to be more done. Uh, there's some major issues coming forward, as we all know and we've heard already tonight, the landfills and our water towers. They're going to be big, they're going to be expensive, and we've got one chance really to get them right. We have ongoing infrastructure needs that are ongoing every year, our roads, our bridges, and our sidewalks. We have to pay attention to them and we have to invest in them. Um, I want to continue to support A and the agricultural community. Uh, I think we need to use uh, the great resource we have in OFA and different farm organizations, and I'd like to see us continue to use the South Dundas Agricultural Advisory Committee, uh, which I helped set up. And I'd like to introduce and uh, roll out Project Emily in South Dundas. Um, Eric's saying I'm done. Uh, we, we, need to, we need to have uh, more residential housing, and we need to expand our tourism. As time will not allow me to touch on everything or elaborate on all areas, uh, please feel free to talk to me afterwards or contact before the election. Thank you. Next candidate is Dell Jones. Uh, I'm too like to uh, thank the Chamber for organizing uh, tonight's event and uh, also thank everybody for coming out. Um, and also I'd like to add to what Archie said, uh, being on council, uh, no matter what the position is, is not an easy job. Uh, and we've got some very talented people at these tables tonight, so I think the, that's a bonus for everybody here. You've got some good choices to make and some tough choices. For myself, uh, just uh, quickly, I'm in the, uh, in the 14th year of a second career. I'm a secondary school teacher at uh, Russell High School. Prior to that, I spent about 27 years in industry. Uh, 20 of it in uh, fairly senior management positions up to uh, director's level um, with companies like Saputo. I did spend uh, about 20 years in the food business with companies like McCain, Saputo, uh, Odd Foods, now Parmalot. Um, and uh, along the way, I, although I wasn't a, not a farmer, uh, I learned the uh, dairy industry from the processor side. I was uh, a, a director with the Ontario Dairy Council representing um, uh, Armstrong Cheese, and then ultimately Saputo when they took us over uh, through an acquisition. I've also, uh, over the years, uh, done lots of volunteering. I was the treasurer for the Winchester District Memorial Hospital at one time. Uh, I am a professional accountant and was a professional accountant and still am a professional accountant uh, before I got into teaching. Skills, uh, I, I do believe that I have fairly strong skills in certain areas, especially financial analysis. And I think that's uh, a valuable tool to have around the council table to look at uh, different options, what's the best way to do things, question things, and, uh, and ensure that the numbers are right before we make decisions. 
Uh, other than that, um, I'm, I am delighted to be here. Uh, I am not sure that my wife is delighted that I'm here, uh, but uh, maybe uh, as things progress, maybe she'll be more delighted. Um, and uh, at this, uh, other than that, uh, I just uh, would suggest to you that I do thrive on challenges and uh, I love finding creative solutions to problems. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming. And again, I'd like to thank the Chamber for hosting this evening. I know it's a lot of work to coordinate such things. Um, my name is Michael Burton. I've been a resident of South Dandas for 16 years now. I own a residence and a business within the village of Morrisburg. Um, for almost 40 years now, I have been in the interior design business, retail and retail management, and tourism and hospitality. So I feel that what I can actually bring to this community is slightly different than what other people are bringing to the table this evening. I'd like to focus on what we can do as a community to be more transparent, how to learn to study management of the staff at the municipal level. I speak to so many people now that feel that they have no contact with the uh, municipal offices and the staff that works there. Should I be elected, one of my goals would be actually be a little more transparent working with the community. Small businesses are very important, and I think a lot of us don't understand the rules, the laws, regulations that are coming down, not only from municipal level, but from the federal and the provincial level. And I think it's time that we take the people who actually work hard in this community, sit down with them, and explain the details that are happening to them and their businesses. I am a valley boy, so I do understand rural connections, but I also think that we have to start becoming a community of everybody, whether you're a rural resident, agriculture, or you actually live in one of the villages of this community. It's very important that we start listening. I have a three-stage pro uh, platform, which is going to consist of transparency at the municipal level, come and talk to us, tell us what your needs are, and then sit down and discuss our future. I want to start working with our tourism business. I run a very successful tourism business in this community. Um, thousands of people a year go through my door. I know what I can do to help improve our community. And thirdly, I just want to start working with our seniors and our youth and give them a better life too. Thank you very much for coming. We're getting this down pat now. Two minutes in the last two speakers. Perfect. Joyce Latulo. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joyce Latulo, and I'm running for councillor. I live in Iroquois with my husband, Reg, and my four kids. I stay at home with my kids, and as well, my husband and I manage 48 townhouse rentals. Currently, I'm a member of South Dundas Minor Hockey in the role of rules and discipline. I'm also co-chair of Seaway Parent Council. And you may also remember me as one of the committee members that helped save South Dundas schools. It's important for me to get elected because I want to give back to the community. I want to make informed decisions to encourage long-term growth in South Dundas. I want council and staff to have a positive working relationship that is transparent and accountable to residents. I feel that the immediate issues facing South Dundas are landfills, water towers, and roads and sidewalks. We need long-term maintenance plans to make sure the money is spent wisely and well. I think that South Dundas has a very prosperous future. We just need to be flexible. Businesses are not are always looking for up-and-coming municipalities to relocate to, and if we are flexible with a positive working relationship and clear direction, this is possible. Marketing ourselves as a commuter community is another way to prosper. Our volunteers need to be supported and encouraged. We need to strengthen ties within our community, not build barriers. This way, the volunteers on every committee within South Dundas will be able to support recreation, save our history, and enhance the beauty of our waterfronts with passion and excitement. Thank you for having me here tonight to participate. Last but not least, Lloyd Wells. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank the Chambers of Commerce for putting this on and everyone coming out. For those that don't know me, my name is Lloyd Wells. I'm a lifetime resident of South Dundas, and I own a little construction company. In recent years, I've noticed that the government of all levels, federal, provincial, and our municipality, things have become unorganized priorities, aren't being established, and taxpayers' money isn't being utilized. To the best interests of the residents of South Dundas, if elected as councillor, I plan to listen to members of the community and want to know what everyone wants to make South Dundas, Dundas even better place to live. I will put an end to wasting taxpayers' money, clear plans, accountability, and need to uh, so we can see where our tax money is going. 
is it going toward maintaining a beautiful community where it is expected that our tax money is going towards improving South Dundas, making our community proud to call home? I believe in customer service. Being a business owner, I want to hear opinions, ideas, even criticism from individuals encountered on a daily basis. This is the way I go if I'm doing right and what areas I can improve. I'm the best to serve everyone involved as a counselor. I'm here to listen. I want to hear you, concerns, and ideas. I want you to know I'm exactly here to help any way I can and hope I can make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you to the candidates. The floor will now be open to voters to ask candidates their questions. Before we do that, I just have a few items to note. One is a civic duty. I got a note here that somebody's lights are on in their car. Uh, one C-A-R-Y-L, your lights are on in the parking lot. Hopefully that's not one of the candidates, but I uh, know. Oh so just for the notes for asking questions. People will have only 30 seconds to pose your questions at the microphone. Please state your name, be respectful, and get right to the point in the question you are asking. You can address your question up to two candidates. If your question is to two of the deputy mayor candidates, you may provide all three with equal time to respond there. If you don't direct the question to anybody specifically, as moderator, I will view the list here that I'm going to keep track of, uh, of who has answered questions so far, and direct them myself to make sure everybody has as much opportunity to answer as many questions as possible. Each candidate, the two of them, will have 90 seconds to respond each. And it should be noted that this is not a debate. There will be no rebuttals or further questions following the candidate's answer. So without further ado, if anybody wants to come up, be lucky number one to ask a question. Good evening. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Warren Schneckenberger. I'm a farmer in South Dundas. My question is about roads, rural roads specifically. As a farmer in care of a large land base spanning all corners of our township, I'm quite familiar with their conditions as I frequent them with large farm equipment. I'm sad to report their condition has deteriorated dr dramatically in the last four years. Our equipment has sustained significant damage traveling our roads, sometimes as slow as five kilometers an hour, as any faster would be disastrous. Heaven forbid two farmers should meet on many stretches of our road as they're rarely a shoulder to safely get over and pass. Um, as mayor, how would you make our rural roads and their upkeep a priority to support our ag community? To the two mayor. Thank you. So you go on and then Stephen, then we'll do it first time. Okay. Thank you, Warren, for your question. Um, significant dollars go into the road system uh, every year on behalf of the municipality. I think it's roughly around 40% of uh, your tax dollars. And uh, to address specifically the uh, rural roads, we, we realize that there are larger equipment traveling these roads. And I know this has been identified by the uh, staff that whenever we do uh, look at um, improving a particular road that it does uh, take that into consideration. Um, as for to meeting on the road, it would depend on whether there is a, uh, you know, a, a, an adjoining driveway or something that could pull off, but that's, that's a little bit uh, difficult to do because well, there's no way we can expand roads to be that wide. However, you know, there is continued dollars going into the roads and uh, it certainly is noted that there is a need to be widening. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Um, first thing we need to do is an asset management plan. We have none. Um, there was a real poor one when I got defeated. Um, from what I see of this council, there is zero. So it's whatever road somebody wants to get done seems to get done first. Um, I can concur. Uh, I do farm also. Uh, not quite as large, but those roads I have traveled, I've suffered damage on my equipment too. And, the challenge with farm equipment is it hasn't got springs and, and soft tires, it, it has to tame all the bumps. Um, my view of the rural road system is that it's in, in poor shape. Uh, we have a lot of paved roads on the Williamsburg side, we do have tar and chipped on, on the Matilda side. They need more maintenance than, than the, the paved roads do, but right now most of the paved roads are getting to their end of life with no plan, and that's a lot of dollars to fix. Yes, they fixed a few rural roads, but not enough. There's just far too many that we need to come up with a plan that we can cost, we can budget, 
and come up with something that makes logical sense. As for the shoulders, I, I agree that we have to make sure we do a better job on the shoulders. Sometimes we can't make it perfect, but certainly we need big, bigger platforms where we can. Thank you. Thank you. Judy Lug, I've been a resident in Morrisburg for about 15 years. Um, I read the article about Carmen House in the newspaper last week, and it was really upsetting. I um, was involved heavily when I lived in Cornwall in the Historical Society, and I know that these buildings need to be preserved for our communities. Why did the old count, why was money put aside and not spent? Like, nothing's been spent except for a study. Like. Why was nothing done in the last six months when something was given to be done, like there was money given? And I would like to address it to the three people who were on the previous council. Eric said only two, so. <laughs> but I'd like to hear from Yvonne and perhaps um, Bill. I think Bill, you were on the old council. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Yvonne and then Bill. Thank you for your question. Uh, with the Carmen House, actually, I did declare a conflict of interest way back uh, uh, in the early part of this year being related to the tenant. However, at that time, uh, once council had decided, the four members of council had decided to uh, permit the tenant, they also attached with it a, um, an amount of uh, $35 to be towards the repairs. Um, why it hasn't uh, come and been spent at this point in time, I, I'm sorry, I cannot answer that. However, uh, I know that the uh, staff did work with uh, consultants to, uh, whenever you do do some of this work, it needs to have um, a consultant or an architect uh, towards the um, fulfilling the obligations of the Ontario Building Code. However, what has tra transpired just in the last couple of weeks is that there are going to be the renovations done as soon as possible that can, pop that can be done without um, the uh, the need to fit to uh, fulfill the Ontario Building Code requirements, so there will be something um, to finish spending the rest of that thirty-five thousand um, dollars to do whatever uh, the list can, the, whatever is provided on the list that can be done. Well, I've always been a strong advocate that uh, we do repairs to our buildings. This one in particular. Uh, yes, we did uh, give direction to the staff to spend up to $35,000 in repairs and maintenance that they told us that could be done with that amount of money. Someone dropped the ball in the office as far as I'm concerned, that they went on a different path looking for more engineer studies to be done. Since it's come back to our attention, they have been instructed to do the repairs up to the $35,000 and Hopefully it's done before the end of this year. Thank you, Bill. We're going to keep with two here. We, we sent two. Those would be the formats of the rules. So we'll go to the next question. And if it somebody else wants to ask it, or we can go back to that topic. Next. Good evening. Uh, Fred Zanbergen, uh, local resident of Dixon Corners here. I, I do a little bit of farming, and I own the car wash in Morrisburg. My question has to do with small business. Uh, since we built the car wash, we've had increase in taxes increase in our water bill, we increase the rate on us, and now we've got a sewer issue, and it's going to cost me again. It just seems like you don't always be in Morseburg. I just want uh, maybe the, the one that's running for deputy, if you could answer, uh, what is your feeling and your plans to work small business? Sir, Jim Graham, Kirsten, and then Bill. Yes, I know uh, the, the taxes and the, and the burden on the small businesses has been, has been heavy. I was on the Morrisburg BIA for eight, eight years. Uh, I can see we've got to do something to try and relieve some of that. Uh, and I think more uh, conversation with small business on what needs to be done is, is the only answer we have, is, is to try and help them survive. Without that, uh, I can see that a lot of small businesses just cannot uh, make it in this municipality. Thanks for your question. Um, 
As far as I'm concerned, partnerships are the main reason why municipality exists. Um, we are not special in South Bend Ops in the sense that every other municipality in Ontario and Canada is competing for folks to come to their municipality, invest in their municipality, and work in the municipality. So my answer to this is that we definitely need to increase the type of partnership that we are, that we need to be good partners with a good will to actually help small business succeed. I uh, sympathize with you as I also want a small business in South Dundas. Um, the tax rate has been re increased in the last few years. Uh, to my knowledge, it's been to the cost of living, which I believe we need to do in order to keep maintaining the infrastructure stuff that we have. The water and sewer rates, they've gone up. It's because of the cost in our building to maintain it. We're trying to alleviate that by bringing in uh, more development. has been advertised that there's a major homing development going on, and as soon as that starts coming onto line, that should alleviate some of the cost on our water and sewer to the rest of the residents. Next question. Hi, I'm Brian Harbors. Uh, this question is for Michael and uh, Stephen. Uh, in your press releases and here tonight, I hear about a certain culture at the office or the public is having issues dealing with staff and that sort of thing. So I have my question is two parts. What do you think the problem is and how are you going to fix it? And the answer cannot be we will work as a council to figure it out. I want to know your solution. <laughs> we'll start with Stephen and then Michael. Thank you, Brian. I picked up the that sense that the culture at the office wasn't well from going around and getting talking to people when I got my nomination papers filled out. Uh, I was actually surprised. I was figuring that this council who went in on this strong mandate that they're going to get the staff they need to do the work was going to be the one to do it. Um, however, something has dropped the ball and. I, and you're right, you just can't say I'm going to work with council. That's not the answer. But I do believe that we need to, I need to have a chat with staff if I get elected to figure out if the right people are in the right job and if they're applying themselves well and if they have the right attitude to deal with the people they need to deal with. Because some people can't deal with people well and some can. So we need to have an analysis there. I'm just looking, I know that if I walk into the office, the culture is not good, you can sense it, nobody's, you know, not a jokingly council. Some, I think, are just got way too much on their plate, either that they haven't got good time management. So, in my opinion, I need, we need to get in there, figure out what's going on, and make sure that they know who they're working for. It's not council, it's all the residents of South Dundas. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I, too, am a business owner in this community. And what I feel is definitely wrong at council is there's nobody to talk to and the biggest problem is there's not an HR person there. People go blindly through their jobs every day without any direction, any guidance. Most people in business that are working think um, HR means one, two, three, you're gone. Where I truly believe that if we get an HR person in there, if only part time, they can actually work with the municipal staff and the council. So it's one, two, your problems have been solved and let's move forward. Everybody needs in life direction, and I don't think a um, municipal staff that I've spoken to them. They're disheartened, they don't know which directions to take. I think it's not responsible of council to do that. We need to find the funds, maybe stop spending some money on studies, and actually get an HR person in there to work hard with the staff and give them proper direction on how to lead their jobs within our community. Next question. Hi, I too run a small business, so I'm around the township an awful lot. Neil, Neil's Radio TV, Neil Vandermeer. Okay, so I run around the township quite a bit, and I meet a lot of these big combines and tractors and this and you name it. So I was thinking about 
we possibly could have a solution like this. Uh, I travel quite a bit to see my brother in Wine River, so that's on Highway 17. They have several passing lanes on Highway 17. Why can't we do that on the small side roads? Just take a driveway or that belongs maybe to a farmer's field and add a few more loads of gravel beside it. So you got some place to duck into and pass each other. I think that was... So you want to direct the question to Well, that's what I'm going to... I'm just going to ask that in a second here. Could I ask somebody to volunteer to answer that? Not all but once. We're going to go... We'll go with somebody that hasn't had a question. We're going to go with Lloyd and then we'll go with Joyce. Well, those roads, like, um, that's a hard one. Like, you go back in the country, so you're going to take, you're asking farmers to give up some of their land to make the roads, even though it's their equipment. Uh, it's just, we only have to deal with it. Like, in the fall, when you're doing, taking the crops off, in the spring, it's not. It is an issue, I know, because I see me pull over. Um, I would like to hear ideas from both sides, like farmers and residents, just to see. That is a good solution, but you just you have to hear everyone's side of it. That's the way I would approach it. I agree with Lloyd. Um, I'm not a roads person, so I can't give you exact details, but I think consultation should happen, and if people are willing, it could be an option. And it's something that we should look into further. Next question. Arden Schneckenberger, a farmer from South Dundas. Uh, primary agriculture and agriculture related businesses are the major economic driver of South Dundas. So I would, my question is, how will you work with farmers and agri-industry in South Dundas to ensure their issues are brought forward to council and staff on a timely basis? I'll pick Steve and then Christine. Kristen. Thank you, Arden. Um, as much as I'm a, a farmer and a, and a fairly large farmer, not, as I said, quite as big as tech murders, um, I do believe that we could rely on more farmers with more brains that could get things, uh, give advice to council. I know the South Dundas Agriculture Advice Committee was formed. Uh, I, am, I am still part of it and still the chair as of right now. Um, we were only asked once for our input and it was on the farmer's market in Morrisburg. Uh, we didn't mind doing that. I thought we uh, provided some advice to that. Um, however, um, our advice was taken uh, by staff and that's where it was left off. So apparently that's one of the issues in the office. There's things not getting done. So what we need to do is continue to have that advisory committee. I certainly wouldn't be on it, but we need to ask them at budget. We need to ask them when we're doing a road. We need to ask them on, on even small market gardens because they have uh, a group, as a group, a much stronger idea base than one person has. Everybody's got good ideas, but put a group of seven together and uh, they certainly can uh, provide what we need for advice for the agriculture community in South Dundas. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Um, I'm a big believer in the advisory uh, committees. As Stephen said though, you actually have to have the conversations. There's no point in having the committee if you're not going to access it. So that needs to be a sitting agenda item. Um, I also think that uh, when I sat at the Dundas Federation of Agriculture and listened, um, there's some discussion that could come just between the municipality and the farmers. There are uh, obviously are, the counties are involved and we do have the South Nation Conservation involved, but I think sometimes that the, the best solutions can happen right uh, on our doorstep. So for me, it's uh, conversation and it's also us advocating at the provincial and federal level uh, when an, a big issue comes to play, we should be sitting with our former partners and giving them a stronger voice. Thank you. Next question. I'm going to address this to Mr. Biafels and one councillor that uh, was in office while he was uh, uh, mayor. And uh, it relates to, uh, I'm Bert Gertzma, I uh, live around Dunbar area. It resulted in an issue 
when the bylaw officer and engineer made a mistake by a document that would cost tens of thousands of dollars to landlords in my vicinity. I am landlord requested to come to council and explain my efforts. He immediately notified the office not to allow any contact. It was his intention to throw us under the bus. He continued to ignore any legal action that was taken after, and it took one year for him to finally recognize that his office was at fault. It was Yvonne that helped me through it. She listened to me, and she gave me the advice, and we won. The question is, that, that my answer what I got when I beat the, the, the township, it was, they didn't feel it. Do you feel responsible and accountable for your mistakes? Uh, Stephen and uh, Archie Mellon. Okay, thanks, Bert. Um, this relates to a drainage uh, project that uh, neighbors of Bert initiated way back in 2012. Um, there were some issues with the partition, and in, in the end, they, it had to go illegal, and, and they won, as, as Bert has alluded to. So. Uh, I will apologize to you and your neighbors right now. I'm going to let bygones be bygones because there's no sense in rehashing this old issue up. We learned our lesson. Uh, Mayor Delegar was at the table too at that time. She didn't mention to us that she was working with you, so I can't take that as advice. As, as much as she did give you advice, it wasn't coming at the table at that time. So in the end, I do apologize. Uh, no sense in going on that issue any further. Uh, thank you for the question. Yes, I, I guess I can remember that uh, drain Bert, that we were talking about. Uh, under the Drainage uh, Act, there are certain steps that have to be followed. Our drainage superintendent at the time was following that. There was an oversight on uh, when the petition was done. Um, it wasn't picked up by our engineer or our drainage superintendent in the municipality, and unfortunately because of that, it dragged out and uh, the, the actual engineer report was done. And then it was after, it was after the fact that found out that the oversight of uh, who signed the petition was discovered, and when it was did, when we did find that, it was, uh, the petition was uh, declared uh, invalid. Uh, it's unfortunate that it went that far. Uh, it's uh, sort of the procedure that it goes through. It's this uh, uh, um, drainage act, which is sort of governed by the province. It's set down by the province. Our drainage superintendent uh, follows those guidelines, and unfortunately, uh, it went that far with uh, with that particular drain. Uh, we have taken steps, I think, to make sure and double check that uh, double check any drainage, new drainage. Uh, New engineer drainage that uh, the actual names and uh, who's supposed to be on that petition is actually on the petition and is proper before we get to that point. Next question. Good evening. My name is Dave Black. I live on the racetrack called Lakeshore Drive. I'm really not here to talk about that though. As a future member of the next council, do you agree that we have a health problem in this uh, township, lack of doctors and support of new doctors, and do we also have a problem on no concerted effort for care of seniors in long-term care programs? Anyone from council? We'll direct it to Dell Jones uh, and then to Don Lewis, who does not have a question. Well, I, I certainly, uh, I think there's uh, been an ongoing issue with uh, recruiting and retaining doctors. Uh, the, and the challenge is, from what I understand from talking to people, direct uh, um, physicians, <coughs> excuse me, physicians and other people that have helped with uh, recruiting, uh, is that uh, ultimately we, we're, we're in a different time than we were 40 or 50 years ago. Lots of times spouses are looking for um, opportunities when they come in with their husband or wife. Uh, if they're a physician, we don't have a lot of opportunities. It's also connected to schools. They're looking at our schools. Our schools are, <clears throat> in some cases, small. And as a, uh, having a background in education, I, I certainly come to appreciate the difficulties uh, administration has as, and teachers have in terms of uh, programming for kids properly. So all these things are tied together. Uh, do I have a solution tonight? Uh, I don't have a solution uh, other than to suggest that we have to all put our heads together, we have to get some input from people, and we have to come up with some kind of a long-term strategy that recognizes all these things, probably ultimately identify and target uh, physicians that would be interested in being in small, small communities, 
uh, people that want this lifestyle. Uh, we can't afford to compete with uh, cities that are offering $150,000 tuitions uh, or tuition reimbursements, so uh, there are other, other uh, issues. Long-term care has been an ongoing issue, I agree, and it's only going to get worse unless we get uh, more, more uh, uh, construction. Mr. Block, I have to agree with you. Uh, it is hard to keep doctors here. We've gone through them. They've stayed six months. I don't believe anybody that came stayed over a year. I do believe what the new council has to do is they have to sit down with the doctors. They have to sweeten the pot. I know at one time there was money that come through the municipality to, for doctors to move here, and I think that has gone by. I think that we do have to speak to the doctors and leave them explain how we encourage people, doctors, to move to our municipality because it is a great place for them to grow up and their children to grow up to live here. We have lots to offer and sir that's the best I can do for you. Thank you. Next question. Yes thank you Peter McCooey. I'm a business owner in Morseburg. Um, as taxpayers we're all uh, following the money so I address this to the mayor, uh, the mayor candidates. Uh, uh, Mr. Bog, as you mentioned in your opening remarks about budgeting and changing budgeting uh, operations and uh, procedure. How would you do that? How would you do change the budgeting to make it more transparent? Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Um, first thing I do is make sure we have some budget call budget consultations that are more open to the public and more open to, and accessible to groups that are directly affected by that budget. Um, the second thing I do would I be emphasize to council that we're going back the way things used to be when uh, Councillor Jones or previous Councillor Jones and I were on council where we readjusted the tax rate for any assessment increases to the average residential unit and then we put on what we wanted to do. So this year, South Dundas did not do that. They had done that last year. They didn't do it the year before. It stopped as soon as I got off council. That's critical because if your assessment goes up 5% on average and it gets bumped and then they take their 3 or 2%. So last year it was 3.6 or something like that because of some things they had to deal with. That's on the tax rate. There's no adjustment for any assessment increases no matter what. That needs to change. Because if it goes up 5% on the average household, that's going to mean 5% plus 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever it is. Too much taxation. If you look at taxation over the last four years, it's gone up exponentially. Some goods assessment increases. I know farm assessments have gone up. We can't fix that. But in the end, if we put it up too high, too fast, businesses pay too much, residents pay too much, we just need to make sure that that gets done right and then make sure the numbers get adjusted well. Thank you. Every year the uh, budget process is a very open uh, pro process that goes through. It's uh, all the public consultation. Uh, the All of the uh, uh, numbers are there for everyone to come and see and, and to work with us uh, You know, with suggestions that you might have. We've kept the uh, tax increase of fairly cl close to the cost of living, but we've been dealt with a lot of uh, unforeseen circumstances that we've had to deal with with uh, buildings and whatnot. And uh, also we have a, a debt that we have been uh, paying for for many years. We're running around $6 million with debt. Most of that comes from the uh, South Bedez Municipal Office, of uh, which we're paying probably about 6% a year for. So uh, when we accommodate uh, some of the uh, uh, projects that are taken on, there is a, a small increase to the tax, but we try to keep it as, as minimal as possible and uh, with assessment that of course comes out of the impact office and just this past year the multi-res did uh, receive a reduction uh, in theirs and of course where does it get spread to but all to the residential uh, assessment. Uh, the residential assessment payers are about, account for about 75% of the taxes so uh, that's what falls to and that's why you see it uh, right away in your own, your own personal taxes. Next question. 
Good evening. I'm Ron Bulbray. I'm a resident of Mariah Town. Uh, the first time I saw a Darby's truck pull up and grab my blue bin, dump the contents, such as metal and plastic and glass, into a, a bin on the truck, and then a hydraulic ram mashes the contents into a, a useless bag of waste. That's all it is. I live, I live in a community where we were getting closer and closer to losing our waste disposal site. So instead, of, they dealt with it by diverting up to 80 to 90 percent of the waste went out for recycling. So my question is, uh, I, I, this question was asked at a town hall meeting in Iroquois uh, four years ago, and the, the answer was 30 percent of our waste is diverted from the dumps. <coughs> what are you going to do to increase our waste diversion so it can be used elsewhere? I'll ask uh, Stephen Weidelt and Del Jones to answer, please. Thank you, Ron. And the landfill issue that's coming up right now is, is big. Um, if we lose our landfills, uh, Darby's will cost twice as much as they've done the house, and you're talking that'll put it over a million dollars a year. We all need to help with this situation. Uh, we need to do all the recycling we can. I think the number is probably still not better than 30 or 40 percent. I'm not privy to the numbers, but I imagine it's not higher. Um, the contractor deals with it as they seem fit. It's their division, and that's how they handle it. So it doesn't land up in our landfills. They have to offset it, but I know that the next contract probably won't be as rosy. China is not taking our recyclables anymore in Canada, so we need to come up with solutions. We did have some solutions that were given to Council earlier on in April by a, a staff that they had hired last fall. Um, that staff member left because he was totally frustrated with Council and their attitude and not getting anything done. We need to either consult him or somebody to come up with solutions to make sure these landfills well, at least last as long as they can, and then look forward to where we're going to go down the road. Uh, I, I guess uh, the starting point for me really would be to investigate it and ask a lot of questions because, uh, you know, I'm certainly not an area where I have a great deal of expertise, but I know there's communities that are uh, diverting far more than what we're diverting. So there has to be opportunities out there. I'd start with uh, neighboring communities to see if we can find some benchmarks. I would expand that outside that, look across um, the country to whatever degree that we can, uh, educate ourselves and look at options. Um, I, I'm a big believer, it's easy sometimes, and sometimes I'm a big believer in common sense, but sometimes we, we you, you can talk to different people and there's a different common view of what common sense is. I think you have to get the facts, understand it, uh, and then do the analysis. Um, it may be that it makes sense to not have um, landfill sites, it may make sense to have a transfer station, or it may make sense to have one landfill site. Uh, but ultimately, what you're talking about is recycling and, and diverting things from that uh, landfill site, or whether it's even, whether it, I mean, certainly even if you're going to a transfer station, a transfer station and shipping it out of here, uh, you, you don't want to ship it more than you have to. So I don't know what the potential is, but if 30% uh, is not good, then we should find out what good is and figure out how to get there. Next question, anybody? Not all at once. <laughs> John Allison, Morrisburg. Sometimes I'm known as being a very tight-fisted wad. Like I don't spend money. Anyway, uh, I'm astounded, and this is an open question, by the figures that are thrown out mostly in the newspaper, of the amount of money that's being spent. Just recently, we were getting a new fire tanker, 360000 or some dollars. I mean, is there no uh, control? I mean, that to me seems a horrendous pile of money for a tanker, which will never wear out. It'll just disintegrate, so the fire marshal's office will say, and it's no good in 10 years. The other costs are, Consultants upon consultants upon consultants. Where is it going to stop? The Carmen House, all of a sudden it's ninety thousand dollars. It goes on and on and on. The canopy repairs, quarter of a million dollars. That 
is right out of the question. It, it's not needed. Not that amount of money. Do you want to grab the question? Anyone. <laughs> Please control the spending. What are you going to do? Is there any stopping? It's just, it just goes on higher and higher and higher. We'll go with Jim Graham and that he's on to try to balance out the number of answers. Jim? I just want to clarify, John, your, the first part of your, your question. Uh, can I get that clarified, please? Okay. Give me a heads up on that. What is that, Jim, you're referring to, the predictor? First part of the question about uh, the about just spending practices, how they're done, how yeah. they're done that way. I look at it as an uncontrolled spending. So, and it should be addressed. Consultants. Yeah, I, I agree. With that. There's a lot of money being spent on consultants. And I, you mentioned the, uh, uh, the former house down here in uh, Iroquois. I was in that house uh, several years ago. We took a tour of it, and there was some some problems. But uh, unfortunately, nothing was ever done to, to correct them, and it's just been let let go. Uh, I think we have the expertise within house. And as you know, you and I talked about it that day, what things can be done to, to help make that place habitable and, and usable. And uh, I think there was no need to spend a lot of money on consultants there. No. Thank you, John, for your question. Um, you made reference to the fire truck. Well, that's part of uh, uh, ongoing business of the municipality with the fire department. We do have a fleet replacement schedule, and uh, approximately 500000 goes into that replacement schedule every year for all of the fleet throughout the whole municipality, and that includes the uh, fire and emergency services, which are very expensive uh, equipment to purchase. However, we have a received an accreditation as well, so it's... Um, you know, people's lives are at risk here, so I think it's certainly a well worth uh, investment. Um, also, the municipality uh, spent uh, significant dollars on uh, consultants. Uh, part of it was um, for the um, asset conditioning plans of all of the buildings that are throughout the municipality. For years and years, these buildings have been neglected, and we needed to get a handle and find out exactly what the concerns and the problems were with all these buildings. And it's been identified that almost $3 million is needed in all of our buildings throughout. So until we know where what we have, uh, it's very hard to go ahead and, and uh, you know proceed with something unless we have somebody that has the expertise to let us know and give us the background on all of that. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're going to open. Yeah, we, we can open it up. If there's nobody else for questions, we'll pass it over to Stephen, and we'll go back after the carbon house with Judy. Actually, sorry, we have somebody here. We're going to keep it up here. Sorry. My name is Jim Saunders. I've been in South Dundas for 42 years. My question is uh, to Steve and to Lloyd Wells. I'm wondering about the Turkai in this area, especially in South Dundas. I have three main concerns. Uh, wildlife habitat loss, erosion, and no buffer zone along the rural roads. And uh, I live on Flag Road, and in the wintertime, the snow blows across that like crazy. And now there's no, there's no buffer zone, no trees to stop the, the snow. I'm just wondering what your feeling on that is. First, Thank you. Thanks for question. Um, as an agriculturalist, I, I do have somewhat concerns. I know that we can all have the attitude to whoever owns the land to do what they wish to do with it. But I think we as, as agriculturists and society need to have at least some discussion with that. Um, South Nation has been seriously looking at this, this, this issue. Uh, they struck an agricultural forestry committee last year. Uh, many of the recommendations they came out with were common sense recommendations where um, farmers would look at their at what they think they need to clear off, assess that value of that land and come up and if it's good land then uh, it, it would be something that they could at least look at to clear. But there's a lot of situations where the forest is not in a good area, it's not drainable, it's stony, it's just uh, not good class land. And I question those who do that and, and see and challenge them to see if they can make money at it. As for windbreaks, I know that the counties are starting to plant more windbreaks along the roads. 
It's probably something we need to look at um, going down the road. I agree with Steve there, Jim. I agree with you. There's a lot of trees getting cut, and uh, there's we got to talk to like South Nation. Uh, South Nation to get a study on this and talk to. I agree, like farmers, they own their land, and if it's a value to them to use it, and I agree with Steve about other land that's getting clear, that is no use, it's just you're not going to get a yield off it, and it still goes on. But until we do studies on it and that, I would definitely, if I get in, check into it and take any ideas from anyone else. What I'm going to do is I don't see anybody else up here. Judy had asked a question. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. Sorry. She never hear everything sneaking up here. I apologize. Name and question. Got off the curve. Um, my name is Shayla Brush. I'm here from Community Living Dundas County. My, we support people with intellectual disabilities. Um, my questions are for the mural candidates. Um, I'm wondering if you have any ideas of how you could promote inclusivity of people with intellectual disabilities in the community. Uh, for example, Yvonne, you would have received a letter about a month ago, um, a new initiative, Employment Connectors. We're trying to encourage businesses in the community to hire people with a disability. So, that's my question. Yvonne and then Steven. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, yeah, the municipality um, certainly welcomes working with the uh, community living, and any time that we receive, uh, as you as you mentioned in the last month, about the uh, uh, employment for with intellectual disabilities. So we share that amongst uh, through our social network and whatnot, so we can uh, get it out to the uh, public and anybody that might be interested with it. Um, you know, I, as for the municipality, I don't think we have anything that we have with the hiring practice as such, but, uh, um, you know, we, we can certainly share your information and, um, you know, spread it throughout the uh, business community and there may be opportunities to work with either groups or organizations or or uh, the businesses to, to come up with a solution for, for a position. Thanks for coming up. Um, it certainly sounds like a project that we as a society and we in South Dundas need to kind of embrace because these people are part of our society. Um, yeah, they're not, you know, they have some challenges and, and I think some of them or most of them could do something good in either our, in businesses, our businesses, or even working for the municipality in some of projects. Because there's projects, we all have them, whether it's, you know, fixing things or painting, it's like menial tasks. We don't need to have uh, a person that's paid $27 an hour painting picnic tables. We can use that kind of employment to make that happen. So partnerships, come and see us. We, we at least we got to have a good look at it and make, try and make things happen. Next question. Uh, my name is Anna Smale. I just live outside Princeton on a dairy farm. Uh, my question is to some council members. It has regarding municipal ditches. What is the timeline that the township gets paid for the work done? We had bought a piece of property. The ditch was done in 2012. We just got our bill two weeks ago. We have other ditching. We are still waiting and we're going on five years that we have never been assessed for that payment. So I'm just wondering what the timeline is and I know Whoever does the ditching gets paid. So the township is waiting, the money is out. Why aren't you filling your coffers right away? We'll direct that uh, to Archie Mellon and Donald Duke. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question, Anna, and that is a very sore point, and it's been a sore point under my saddle for quite a few years with the municipalities. <laughs> Basically, when the ditch is done, the contractor, the whole back period is done, the contractor's paid. Um, anybody that qualifies for the one-third government grant through OMAFRA, we can't apply for that until the following January, until the, the year after the ditch is finally done. We wait for that money to come back in. One of the things that I did get municipality and staff to do on new engineered drains was to start billing out two-thirds within a very short period of time. 
Uh, so because there, we had, a, at one time, we had, a, a, for several years, we had carried over a million dollars on the books on drainage maintenance that has been paid out that we haven't collected back in. We're whittling that down. I've been trying to get staff, and staff has made good inroads in on new engineer drains. Uh, on maintenance drain, it's still the same thing. Uh, I've, been, I've been at them. We took a step back because of uh, staff shuffles. Or we had to shuffle staff around because of maternity leave. The individual that I was working with on that couldn't work on it as much as he would have liked to. It is a big problem, uh, personally, from a farmer's perspective. I want to get that off the books. The municipality does not need to be carrying a million dollars worth of uh, liability, again, not liability, but cost, before we can get, start collecting it back. It's something we're going to keep working on. I would like to get it down to two or three years, not five, and I've seen some at seven. And it's ridiculous, and we're still working on it. Thank you, Richie. Donald? Mrs. Snell, that is uh, not a very good question for me. I don't know much about drainage, uh, but I don't understand why it would take six years to get a bill. I just don't understand that. Uh, and I do believe if I am elected as a councillor, that that will be a very important question for me to ask why it takes so long. And then if somebody asks me, then I can most certainly answer that question. But right now, I'm sorry I don't know much about drainage, just by what Mr. Mallon has said. So I'm very sorry I can't answer that. Next question. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Tom Smith, I've been a resident of Sip Dundas my whole life. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, this question is going to go to uh, two counselors, uh, Joyce and Michael, um, and also maybe Lloyd, you could comment on this after, after a while if we have been into open session. Uh, I too was considering a run on a council spot myself, uh, but I decided against it because basically I already have a very full plate at home. I have four children, I work full time, and I run a farm with my father as well. And uh, I believe I heard Joyce say that you have four kids as well. Your plate is already full, I, I know. Uh, and uh, Michael, like you, you, you three are basically brand new at this. Uh, just what could you say to reassure us that um, you're going to have a time availability to do everything to the, the best of your ability to basically? Joyce, and then Michael, please. Thank you. Um, my kids are older, they're 11 to 17, so I'm able to get out and about, and uh, they can drive, so I don't have to chauffeur them so much anymore either. <laughs> um, I just felt this was the time. I've done school council, and things get shifted up to higher levels of government, and I felt I would like to be involved more and do more for the community. Thank you. Um, yeah, I work very hard in this community. Uh, my last day off was in June, and it was a great day. Most important thing is, the past four years, I was dealing with a situation where people in this community are had elderly dying parents. My time was concentrated there. I now have an empty slate to concentrate on the needs of my community. The reason for doing this, though, is things have come up to me in my business that I'm unhappy with, and I cannot sit idly by and see the rest of our community neglected and misunderstood while I sit around and do nothing. So my main direction is to continue, yes, of course, to work very hard within my own business, but to put as much effort and time as I can into the, the community and to the township itself. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions? If not, that was directed to Lloyd as well. We'll do that. We'll do some wrap-up on the Carmen House. There's an earlier leftover part from Judy Luck's question. So Lloyd, is that a good question? Yeah, I got a very busy schedule too, but I, uh, for the last four years in my line of business, I've been seeing stuff going on, like trying to get uh, building permits and other things done, and just different projects going on, and I feel I can help on situations with all the buildings we have and different stuff, and stop wasting money, and listen to the people. Like if someone asks a question, don't put it on the back burner. Direct it so they get the answered within a week or two, not three months. That's the main thing. You just got to listen to people and get things done because
the counselor not doing their job. So if I get in, I get a bank time, and I will listen. I'll go back to uh, Judy Logue had a question uh, earlier about the Carmen House, and she asked the incumbent council members. So I'm going to give Archie and Ellen the opportunity, and Stephen had asked to comment on that as well. So we'll go with Archie and then Stephen. Back on the Carmen House question, please. Uh, could you please refresh me? I'm on um, the Carmen House. You were wondering why we why we consider tearing it down? No, I'll go back. I'll, I'll have Judy come back to refresh you. Yeah. Yeah. Put Judy in the spot here too, but you're welcome, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> when I read the article in the paper last week about nothing has been actually spent on the house, my question is why has nothing been spent when there was money allocated? And I, you know, I've heard two other answers, but I'd like to hear yours. Yes, thank you for the question. Yes, it was um, rather baffling. It was quite a bit in couple of months to say the least. Um, council actually thought that uh, when we gave the direction back um, about two or three months ago for staff to authorize 35000 that that, month, that work was going to be going ahead. Uh, during the whole process, staff realized they needed another engineer's report. Sort of blew us away. Uh, that uh, then snowballed up to 94000 <coughs> Um, we were on, we, we didn't accept that. We didn't think that was that was right. Um, the work was not completed because of an extra engineering study that, under the building code, staff said that that's what we needed. Uh, as has been indicated here, that we um, some of the work has been started or going to be done. Uh, I'm hoping that within uh, a very short period of time that we can get to the bottom of, uh, of that list of things that need to be done. Some things uh, under the building code, uh, most of it, just about all of it's under the building code, what is required. But hopefully within the very near future, I think already some uh, work has been started or people have been in to look at the work. But uh, I'm hoping very soon, if not uh, before snow flies. Thanks for the question. A little refresher on that whole Carmen House fiasco, as I call it. Uh, our tenant, who's been paying rent and looking after our building, was told to get out last year. She wasn't, she just told to get out. No options, no nothing, that was it. All winter they fought against the municipalities for her to stay. They did lose, but in the end, Councilor relented. Kudos to them. However, they had that $35,000 to spend, so council directed staff to do that. The challenge landed up that staff did not do their job. So my question to you is, who on this council table needs to make sure staff gets their job done? And that's the mayor. There should be a whiteboard in, in the office of CAO. Council decided to do this, put it on there, completion date. Here, and no coming back saying you've got to do a study here, study that. You had your, you had your, orders, please do so. And I'm not sure why they didn't do it. Now we're sitting here, it's winter, uh, our tenant wanted windows, the windows leak like a sieve, no windows going to get replaced and that money is from what I seen of uh, the uh, report last night. Does anybody else have a question? Yes, I do. Here we go. Just looking at the time to maybe one of the last questions. Jim Jordan, Water Spring. Uh, to speak about the Carbon House. Um, when the bottom was uh, ejected, <coughs> the landlord in Canada um, suggested or stated that tenancy uh, could be fulfilled if they spent $5,000 for the window, $5,000 for a work ladder that would, would go up the window. Later, $35,000 was allotted. $11,000 of that was spent by Donald P. H. Lewis in direct uh, opposition to the council. <coughs> now it's into 93,000. Question is, if the 11,000 dollars that was spent without council approval, can that be <coughs> brought back from the personal fortunes of Donald Lewis? Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna, just looking at the sheet, I'm going to ask Yvonne, and then I will ask uh, Dale Jones to try to balance it, giving people an opportunity. No, 
<laughs> I don't think that'll come out of uh, Mr. Lewis's pocket. Um, when the members of council back in, I forget, earlier in the spring, uh, approved the 35,000. That was based on the asset conditioning report. And as many people that have been on council are aware of these reports, they know that these are class D estimates. And they are very loose estimates that may need further investigation by an architect depending on what the building code dictates as to what the um, job that needs to be done or the, or the um, um, repairs and maintenance that needs to be done on that. Um, it's been discussed at council that, uh, or discussed uh, with the um, CAO just recently. I was speaking to him that, you know, can that 14,000 be absorbed in in uh, the overall building maintenance uh, repairs part? So that 35,000 definitely can be it can be directed towards the carbon house to fixing up as many of the uh, deficiencies as possible. Well, I, I think uh, Yvonne is maybe uh, suggesting what I was going to suggest. I, I was a little confused on the um, uh, article in the paper, at least, and my understanding, because uh, if $35,000 was authorized to do repairs and, uh, and staff was directed to do the repairs, then I don't understand how anybody could go out and spend $14,000. Now, if it was a couple thousand dollars, uh, that would probably be a reasonable um, thing to do for the, for the person involved. If they had if it was the planning department or whoever it was involved with it, if they felt they needed to spend that much money, they should have at least taken the CEO. The CEO should have realized the sensitivity of it and, and been back talking to council. Uh, at this stage, I would certainly argue from my perspective that the $14,000 is not part of the $35,000. That was money that was not authorized, and I would suggest uh, that the CEO should find uh, another home for that $14,000 and uh, the 35000 should be spent on the initial repairs. In terms of the study and the second study and the 94000 I, I honestly would have to question that. Uh, I understand maybe there's some issues the way that it's currently structured, but I would go back and relook at the whole thing because it just doesn't seem to make sense to spend that kind of money if it's not required to do the basic maintenance. Chance for one last question before we go to closing statements. Anybody like to take it? Going once. Going twice. All right. With that, we will move to closing statements. Each candidate is going to have one minute to provide their closing comments, and they're going to be done in reverse order from the opening statements. So what I do to save time is I'm not going to introduce each. Once the applause is done, the next uh, speaker will just go, and their one minute will start. First is Lloyd Wells. Okay, I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Very nice crowd. And like I said before, if I get elected, I'm going to listen to everyone here and everyone else that because we definitely need change uh, stop wasting money like I've been preaching all along and I think if we all work together like with the good council things can get done and get this community going in the right direction the municipality no bit because uh, what I've seen in the last four years has just been uh, not good thank you very much for coming up I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. If elected, I will be a hardworking team member, I'm a positive thinker, and I choose to see the best of everyone. I will be honest, accountable, and accessible, and I will be an advocate for volunteers. The future prosperity of South Dundas begins with clear direction, flexibility, and a positive atmosphere of customer service. And I hope you will give me the opportunity to be part of the team that accomplishes this. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to take 30, 60 seconds to point out a few things here. I think we all realize now that we need guidance in this township. We're spending a lot of money that we don't understand where it's going. We have a group of people here that could actually sit down and make some great decisions for our community. The agricultural community is facing problems in regards to the canopy, to erosion, to um, drainage of their fields. It is our responsibility as councils. That's what we do. We are here to counsel. We need to start taking information that the other governments, i.e. the provincial and the federal governments are giving us, and start relating that back to our community. So you're not sitting here feeling that you don't understand. You need to come to us and say, what is happening? Can you explain that to us? It's our responsibility to counsel you throughout your community, and that is what I will strive to do should I be elected as a councillor. Thank you.
I will ask for your support. I uh, will say that when I was on council previously, actually Stephen alluded to this uh, issue. Uh, I still remember getting the first uh, audit uh, back that year. That would have been in 2007 in the spring. We had a million dollar surplus. The mayor at the time, who I had a great deal of respect for, was congratulating staff on doing a great job. And my immediate issue was that we have a million dollar surplus and a six million dollar budget. We were absolutely out of control. At that point in time, we took the initiative at the time, our council, to basically say, look, if we have a million dollar surplus, there is no need to raise taxes in the next four years. And when impact assessments went up, if they went up 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, we lowered the tax rate to offset that. We had a 0% tax increase for that four years. We continued to build reserves. We hard surfaced 75 kilometers of road. Uh, and we also accomplished many other things. There's not enough time to list it. So we did need to get our finances under control. Thank you. I want to uh, thank you all for coming out again tonight. It's uh, good to see such a large crowd. Uh, over the last year, I have gained valuable experience in identifying and working with and around what council has jurisdiction over and control of. And that's why I feel I can be a positive, stable, and reliable presence at the council table if elected for the next four years. That is why I'm asking for your support on October 22nd so that I can help you and together we can shape some deaths into the community we all want and that we all call home. Thank you. I would like to thank everybody for showing up tonight. There were some very interesting questions. And on that to note that uh, Mr. Jordan, the question that he asked, I am not that Don Lewis. <laughs> The only thing I can have to say is on October 22nd, 2018, get out, vote, look at who's running. You can have a very, very good council that will work hard, get things done. So please, before you put your check mark, check the names, think it over. Thank you very much. Thanks again, everybody, for coming out tonight. And uh, I know the question came up earlier about being available. I'm retired, and I have full-time availability. And like I say, I've given everybody my phone number, and you're welcome to call me at any time. Uh, I think we all should be thankful that we have a country that we can go through this process like we are tonight. Uh, I'm very uh, proud of the, the people that have come out here tonight and asking us questions. And I'd like to request your support on October the 22nd to uh, vote for me for Deputy Mayor and I'd like everybody to go home and have a very good Thanksgiving weekend and enjoy a good meal. Thanks everyone, I'll keep this short. Uh, thanks so much, like everyone said, we really appreciate uh, you coming out, uh, thinking of those questions ahead of time and bringing them forth. Um, by the discussion tonight, there's obviously lots of work to do. Um, I'm willing and available, and I believe I have some skills. Nobody can know everything, but one of the things I think that is missing is the connection to the community, and also asking the right questions and follow through. Um, and that's one of the things that's been a hallmark of both my professional and personal career, and that's why I'm here. So, thank you. From October 17th to the 22nd, you will be able to cast your vote for the candidates of your choice in South Dundas. You may vote by internet or in person. What I'm asking is you to vote. Vote for the candidate of your choice, but vote. Make your voice heard and your voice vote count. Many men and women lay down their lives so we can live in a free and democratic society and have the right to vote. So make your choice and vote. Tonight I'm asking for your support to elect me as your Deputy Mayor of South Dundas. It would be an honor and a privilege to serve as a representative on Municipal Council as well as County Council. Thank you. I would like to thank all of you for attending and showing your interest in South Dundas. You've heard by my commitments along with my responses to your questions and concerns. But most importantly, I have heard from you and what you have to say. Change is needed in South Dundas. In front of you is a range of candidates 
who have shown why they believe they deserve a seat at the council table. If elected, I commit to work on what matters to you most, and I commit to working together with my council colleagues and with municipal staff to get things done. I will be available to chat after the meeting. Also, please free, feel free to contact me. My phone number is on the back of the card you received earlier tonight. Thank you again, and have a safe drive home. I just want to uh, begin by thanking the Chamber, of course, and our moderator, Duncan, as well as to all of you for attending this evening. This is a great crowd. Uh, over the past nine years, I've, I've proven to be approachable, honest, and fair, and I've always listened. And uh, the, the next four years will be a great opportunity to build on a lot of the key steps and uh, work that we have taken during this term of council. I also want to give kudos to the media for all the questions and answers that they have uh, provided for all of you to read through uh, our local newspapers. I think that uh, gives a real good bird's eye view into the background of all of the uh, candidates. Uh, the ex experience and continued support that I've received has encouraged me to once again commit to serving the municipality of South Dundas as your mayor. And voting is less than three weeks away, and I, I uh, ask for your support on October 22nd. Thank you, good night, and safe travels. Thank you to the candidates. Just a couple of closing comments here before we wrap up. Let's give these folks a round of applause for bring their names forward to serve that community.